everybody. Welcome back to As It Goes. If you're new here, I'm Lydia. You know, we're all just figuring it out as it goes. And conversations help us along the way. As per every week, I'm really excited about today's episode. This is a topic that I've been reflecting on. It came up spontaneously. It's a... something I hold as a truth in my life and I think also something that is reflected in many of the brilliant spiritual philosophies of the world, which is keeping an open heart. I am constantly reminded of this. Well, okay, where who lots to say. Um, first of all, I'm really excited for the also the coming episodes of As It Goes. I have had just idea after idea for conversation. I absolutely think that is because, as we talked about with my getting out of a funk and last week's episode of Soul Food, Feed Your Soul, I have been feeding my soul. And because I have been feeding my soul with those things that are my soul food, I am just overflowing with ideas and creativity and la 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 great things great things and I just have idea after idea for these conversations I have so many voice notes on my phone of me talking through thoughts in the car or whatever as I as I work work out what what the basis is for some of these anyway yeah very exciting things coming so make sure you're subscribed uh while you're at it rate the podcast leave a review share it with a friend. All right. Anyway, let's get into it. Having an open heart. The original conception that I wanted to talk about uh, with this had to do with, should I just put in that idea? Maybe I'll just put in that voice note from as I was driving. So here's my original idea. Let's do this week's episode on keeping an open heart, why it's so important to keep an open heart, why I think for me that's the way I choose to live and stay and, you know, even in the face of trauma and suffering and pain, you know, that's how you experience the most beauty in life. Okay, so there was that. You know, as I think about this, I really, a recent occurrence in my life has made this subject surface and something that is someone who's close to me told me maybe a year ago was to never close your heart I'm someone who I I wear my heart on my sleeve I'm very open so a lot of things touch me right painful and non-painful I'm a crier if if something touches me and speaks to me, I it will be visible whether I, you know, cry or not. Because my heart is so open, because I'm so open to being touched by everything, because I want to be touched by everything. And I think that's really important because we can't the depth of our experience in our lives depends on our willingness to be open to those depths. The more we close ourselves off, and we'll get into this, the shallower our experience becomes. And I think that can be really felt. Whether it's hard for us to put a pin in it and name it is a whole other thing. First and foremost, in that vein of thought, be sensitive. Allow yourself to sense and be open to what your senses pick up and express to you through feelings. We as kids are all sensitive. Sure, it's a spectrum. A lot of us were conditioned away from sensitivity. One of my best friends and I, you know, going through childhood, going through, going into adolescence, I remember she really struggled with this. I think we're both equally sensitive We both consider ourselves to be empaths. For anyone who's not familiar with what that term is or what I mean when I say that, someone who is simply empathetic through and through. And people used to tease her about being sensitive, about crying, about whatever. 
that's just so fucked up because what are you when you tease someone about being sensitive right let's break this down you're teasing someone for feeling we can't control what we feel over and by and by as adults a lot of us try to control that level of sensitivity we try to make ourselves stones and impenetrable and whatever because at the end of the day we're just a little child that doesn't want to get hurt allow yourself to be sensitive because now as adults especially right you know it's hard because we want to balance everything we want to be able to you know the ideal is to not be against your emotions like you have to rule over your emotions and to also not be ruled by your emotions the goal is to find a sort of balance where you're not blocking any of your emotions in fact you're so open and you're so in tuned to that chemical communication because that's really what it is it's your body taking in some sort of a sensory thing experience and then through a chemical reaction communicating to you a feeling vis-a-vis that experience so the idea the ideal the goal is to then be able to discern what am i being told and now what am i going to do with that information how can i respond rather than react how can i pause exploring get curious about what's going on here what am i being told la 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 and move forward in an empowered place and i think that's a little different than being touched by a movie but also it's not right for example we can watch the movie the pianist about a piano player during world war ii very touching Allow yourself to be touched as you watch that movie and then sit with, rather than shifting to another source of stimulus, sit with those emotions. Reflect on what that brings up for you. And again, respond. Allow yourself to be changed by what you just experienced because that is the beauty of keeping an open heart. And being sensitive is allowing yourself to be changed by your experiences because everything's going to change us in one way or another, right? We absorb everything subconsciously. So be empowered by it. Some of it is out of our control, right? Societal, cultural conditioning. I think especially for boys, if you haven't seen whether you're a male, female, non-binary If you haven't seen the documentary, The Mask You Live In, it's all about toxic masculinity and its impacts. And I think that it's a really, it's a a really great documentary, a really great watch. With an open heart, we can understand the ways in which we wear masks, the ways in which we perform for others to fill different roles in our lives, all for what is really at the core of it for love and acceptance and being understood. There's a great quote, perhaps one did not want to be loved so much as to be understood. How can we truly be understood when we wear masks and play roles? How can we understand ourselves if we are wearing masks and playing roles with ourselves, tricking ourselves? With an open heart, we can take off the masks. We can truly get to know and understand ourselves with openness and non-judgment and acceptance. That is how we love ourselves. That, from there, is how we love others unconditionally. But we'll get to that down the road. In that example, any sort of conditioning away from sensitivity, away from what is beneficial to us, that being sensitive is. It's betraying ourselves, teaching us to turn our backs to the physiological, biological, nervous system response process of our bodies, taking in info, communicating with us, especially about our needs and feelings is betraying ourselves so i think the first place especially if you're you 
realize as, you know, I think we all can awaken to are the ways in which we've closed our hearts. Even if we consider ourselves to be open hearted, as I did, I had I looked at myself and realized there are absolutely ways that I'm just perpetuating trying to protect myself in some situations. And there's ways I'm not. But that's a a huge place to start because as we're able to feel and hear and respond to our needs and feelings, we can create a really strong connection with ourselves that demonstrates to ourselves we can depend on ourselves. We can self-soothe. We can take care of ourselves in ways our caregivers might not have been able to because they already had closed off about certain things or they weren't shown how to do this stuff. You know, it's it's a lot. It, it's deep. And it's a really incredible thing to decide to allow yourself to be sensitive. I think that the sense of confidence that comes from that and esteem and worth that comes from then acting in alignment with that knowledge and that communication and those responses is incredible. I've tried to conceptualize this over the past few years especially. The more I honor what is true for me, And the more I am able to adequately respond to my needs and elevate and take care of my well-being, fuel my own evolution, and pick things that align with all of that and allow, and, and my values, and allow what doesn't to fall away, the more my confidence, my worth, and my esteem has grown. Otherwise, all of that stuff sat on the surface, on superficial things. And that is also felt, I think, in my experience. It becomes really dependent on those surface things. And it's not long-lasting. It's not sustainable. It's not, again, as deep, as foundational, as anchoring within ourselves. When we open our own heart. We open to allowing our whole self and our true self, the part of us that is ever present from birth to death, that just is the freedom to be. We are giving ourselves permission to just be because if our heart is closed then we're constantly trying to control ourselves through our actions through what we say through who we hang out with through what job we have la 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 whereas when we're open and we can we are open to our whole self to this self that is ever present and persistent that just is it can just be and then from there it can just express From there, we can exist in this place. And in doing so, we give others permission to exist in their same space in that sense. It is felt. Maybe I should should do a poll of this with my friends, you know, and I'm not perfect, right? But I would have to believe, (laughs) surely I can tell you this. It is way more rewarding and of value to be my friend now than it was to be my friend in middle school or in high school or even in my first two years of college because until we get real about the ways we are selfishly just trying to get our own needs met and the ways that we move through the world and aren't aware of those behaviors, we can't be a good friend. We can't be a good partner, whatever. There's a balance between accountability and compassion for ourselves in that sense. But both are essential, right? Dealing with all that shit, not even having any idea how, like, what's going on, how to, you know, cope, how to do anything other than whatever coping mechanisms a person has that hasn't been taught how to 
attend to their own needs, how to self-soothe, how to do all those things that I believe is really important to teach children. And I think that's the future of raising healthy beings into the world instead of just teaching them unhealthy ways through example, passivity, and unconsciousness to perpetuate the trauma responses and selfish, egocentric-based need-seeking that happens at that age, I believe, and I really try, like it is, it is a goal that I hold space and presence for my friends to just show up as they are. Do I try to also, you know, elevate them and feed their souls? Absolutely. Absolutely. But first and foremost, it's of the utmost importance to me that I hold space through my own openness with myself for my friends, for my loved ones, whatever. And it can be harder with some rather than others. I've said this before in a different context. We can only know someone else as deeply as we've met ourselves. We can only meet someone else as deeply as we've met ourselves. We can only be as open to others, as open as we are to ourselves. Right? By being open and keeping an open heart, we open our hearts to others in that way as well. We give ourselves permission to stop the internal battle, to make peace and feed love through our actions by feeding our well-being and our path, our evolution. And we see ourselves more clearly in the way we perpetuate harmful behaviors and are able to make space for love, understanding, forgiveness, humility, and healing. Because again, right, there's two, you know, there's multiple dimensions to this. But in a more binary sense, just as we open up to ourselves, our truth, uh, what feeds our soul, what's our, you know, what we define as our purpose, our meaning, our why, all of those things. As, as, and as we become more comfortable and open to showing up as ourselves with ourselves and then as ourselves in the world, we are also becoming more open again to the way that we perpetuate harmful behaviors and through that make the space for healing and forgiveness and understanding and humility and love. Because if we don't make space for that part of it, what could seem like a little bit of the dirtier, muddier part for some of us, then we're really not open, right? We have to be open to it all. What is quote unquote good and what is quote unquote bad? Because that is what openness is. There is no good and bad. We are just open. It just is. We just are. And as we see openly and clearly, non judgmentally, compassionately, forgivingly, the mud settles, the water becomes clear. With an open heart, unconditional love can flow through us and express through our actions. What do I mean by unconditional love? If you just Google unconditional versus conditional love, I'm sure some great graphics will come up that I have probably seen across the internet. But essentially, conditioned love is a lot more common than we might like to admit. Conditioned love says... I love you if you show up in this way. Conditioned love says, I don't love you if you show up in that way. Unconditional love says, show up however you are. Come as you are and I can love you. We don't judge others. And when we do judge others, we know that we're actually judging ourselves. We understand with an open heart that everything is a mirror to us. We understand the illusion of separation and instead feed the truth of oneness, of unity. Unconditional love, for example, knows life is a lot. It's beautiful. It's difficult. 
everyone's just trying to do their best. And in The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, there's a quote about good and evil. The prophet figure in the book is talking about good and evil. And they say, For what is evil but good tortured by its own hunger and thirst? Unconditional loved knows that truth. Unconditional love knows that we are all an expression of the source of creation, that we are all one. Unconditional love knows that we are all trying our best and doing our best with what we have, with where we're at, with what we know. And in that sense, in in that clip that I mentioned that I wanted to speak on, you know, for this topic, I'll give you an example, right? This was something when I was in an abusive relationship and I was doing my healing after the fact, I, as I had to reopen my heart from that experience and it took me many years. And like I said, even in the past year, I've realized the ways in which I've still had a closed heart before and after that trauma. Unconditional love and my open heart reminded me this person, for him to have done those things to me means the good in him was so hungry and thirsty that that's how he thought he had to meet his needs. That's how he learned through his behavior, through his models, through everything to meet his own needs. It doesn't mean those are, that's an okay behavior. It doesn't m- mean it's acceptable. But unconditional love can find it in itself to still express loving kindness through compassion, through understanding, through forgiveness, through empathy. It doesn't mean I ever have to let that person back into my life. It doesn't mean I ever have to talk to that person again. It doesn't mean anything like that. It just simply means that it is of the utmost importance to me as someone who wants to keep an open heart, as someone who wants to allow unconditional love to flow through them, that I don't get to choose, even if it caused harm to me, where and when that love is directed. Because then that's conditional love, right? With an open heart, we can see within ourselves how our ego holds us back. We can see the ways, again, those conditions of the ego trying to meet its own needs, trying to meet its own perceptions of itself and conception of itself, as opposed to when we move beyond egoic perceptions of selves, stories of ourselves, who we believe we are, and just open up to ourselves as we are to an ever-changing being and existence. We can choose love instead of those conditions in any sense, right? We can be courageous enough to shine light, to shine love where it has been blocked out. And again, I think this starts with ourselves, right? Knowing how to shine that love into those corners of ourselves onto that little inner child that's in the corner, cowering, crying, telling itself repeatedly, nobody loves me or I'm not lovable or whatever those wounded beliefs are from our childhood, from your childhood, from my childhood. With an open heart, we have the courage and the strength and the resources enough, right? That openness, that love, the unconditional love, the understanding, the forgiveness, the humility, the healing. We have all of that which we need and can call on to bring light to those spaces so that our hearts can open even more, so that we can let even more love in. With an open heart, we are truly free. And I want to mention, as I was finishing up Metahuman by Deepak Chopra, which again, 
linked in the description. He references a quote from Buddha and he references this whole concept. There's two things to this, actually. The first one is, fear is born from arming oneself. I think as we move through the world, we discern naturally as a result of what we're biologically wired to, but more so in the modern sense, I think it is a little more mental, is what are those threats? What types of people seem threatening to us because of an experience? Is it the bad boy? Is it the good boy? Is it this type of a girl who hurt my feelings then? So now all girls like that, that exhibit that trait or quality are going to hurt me. All of those types of beliefs are born from fear. They're born from the fear of being hurt again. But as I was reminded recently, as I was grappling with something in my life, a friend told me, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what I choose because I will heal from it. I healed from it once and I can heal from it again if shit goes sideways, right? While I was grappling with this situation and trying to make the right decision for me and the other person, it was a really important reminder because as she remarked, like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to make the quote unquote right decision. I ended up making the right decision for myself and I'm very happy with it and I feel the benefit of acting in alignment with what I you know, know in my heart and my gut and listening to that and having the courage to do that rather than doing the easy thing of, you know, perpetuating a situation that could cause harm to both people involved. But at the same time, it's like we have healed and we will continue to heal over different situations, over different things. We are so strong. We don't need to arm ourselves against threats like that. We can acknowledge red flags in situations, right? And say, okay, I've been here. I've learned this lesson. Thank you, but no thank you. Goodbye. Salut. Have a good day. I think there's a really big difference between those two things, right? When we have an open heart, we disarm ourselves. We put those arms down. We're not tight. We're not clenched we're not closed we're we're open and we can be open while also making difficult decisions to benefit our well-being we don't make others threats we can see with our unconditional loving lens we can see their pain we can see why they are hungering and thirsting and acting in this way. We can see that the only real threat is the threat we pose to ourselves when we don't act in alignment with our awareness, our inner knowing, with our intuition, with what aligns with us. That is the only threat. Because with all that knowledge and information... We know how to respond. It's whether or not we choose to respond in that way. And I also think, and I just want to speak on this again from my own experience, I think when we make people threats, we actually feed them our power because then we create them as this bigger monster in front of us, and again, from my own experience, this is the result of making people a threat versus looking that quote-unquote threat in the eye, right? Seeing their pain, disarming ourselves, and still standing there strong in ourselves and doing what is best for us without causing harm to anyone else. The other thing I wanted to say from this was, doo -doo -doo. this is again from the Buddha, 
That is quoted in MetaHuman. Seeing people locked in conflict, I became completely distraught. But then I discerned a thorn, difficult to see, lodged deep in the heart. It is only when pierced by this thorn that one runs wildly in all directions. So if the thorn is taken out, one no longer runs but settles down. We all have a thorn in our heart. Maybe multiple thorns, right? (laughs) More realistically speaking. Unless we pull out that thorn, we run wild. We experience good tortured by its own hunger and thirst. We rely on egocentric ways to meet our own needs, to fulfill our own desires because of that thorn. I was just listening to Hardcore Literature's podcast on Man and His Symbols by Carl Jung, which, again, linked in the description. In it, Benjamin, the host of Hardcore Literature, Ben mentions how, you know, the most dangerous animal is the wounded one. The most dangerous human is the wounded one, the wounded child, that thorn within us that makes us run in all directions. Even in The Untethered Soul, which linked in the description. I remember in that book, it's been a few years since I read it, but same thing. Michael Singer mentions the thorn as well. So I, I just really love that idea and I really love that because I think when we look closely enough, Not only do we see our own thorns, but when we look closely enough, we can see the thorns of someone else. And whether it's just, you know, simply acknowledging and bowing in respect and walking away, wishing them all the best by calling on our unconditional love, or knowing when, you know, this is a person I love and this is a person who... I see trying to pull out their own thorn. Together we can support each other in pulling out our own thorns, in uplifting ourselves as individuals. That's also beautiful. So I think it's more about discernment than arming ourselves with the path of an open heart. With an open heart, right, we're, we're free to just be in our pure nature that has always been and is always available and ready for us to come home to if we are willing to walk the path back home and tidy up once we are home within, no matter our age or what we've been up to, the experiences, la la la. Thich Nhat Hanh, one of my favorite Buddhist monks, has a quote in, a, in The Art of Communicating. The path home is not long. Home is inside us. Going home requires only sitting down and being with yourself, accepting the situation as it is. Yes, it might be a mess in there, but we accept it because we know we have left home for a long time. So now we're home. With our in-breath and our out-breath, our mindful breathing, we begin to tidy up our homes. That's what I was alluding to there. Our inner house, our inner sanctuary, the beautiful, limitless, infinitely open space of unconditional love that exists within each of us is always there. That part of us, right, that just exists, that just is, is always there and available for us to come home to, to exist in, to move through the world from. It's just a matter of wanting to go there and staying there. All religions, all spiritual practices and paths talk about love. And there's a reason why. Love, unconditional love, is our true nature. Many of us are conditioned out of it 
through example and direction, society, community, religions themselves, teach us and we learn conditional love. There's a quote that I love I found many years ago, and it's so simple. We are put on this earth to love. I hope we all realize that. We can't talk about keeping an open heart without talking about love. But I think, even in my own experience, right, it's been really important to look at what, how do I define love? What is love to me? How have I been conditioned to see what love is? How does the media, movies, music, everything shape my perception of what love is? And then how does my own personal definition reflect that? or form another shape of love. For me, I personally really, (laughs) right, it's not easy in practice, but it's about the unconditional love. I have been hurt by conditional love. I have hurt others by conditional love. I do not wish to perpetuate that anymore. That's in and of a nutshell of, of that. Because when we, when we have conditional love for people or even desire for people, it limits and clouds the way we are able to see and relate to them. I got into this on one of my voice notes that I think I wanted to do. I want to do a separate conversation on this. But I'll use it as an example. In reconnecting with someone, as we were kind of getting a little vulnerable with each other, right? As we do, as we meet and re-meet people in our lives. They said some things to me that I didn't respond to in a way I would have if a friend had told me them. And I think that was completely the result of the desire and conditional love that was surrounding that situation, that was orbiting that experience, even just on my end. Like, I won't even speak on their end. I just couldn't see clearly. I couldn't show up clearly. I wasn't showing up fully. And there's other complexities to that, but that's like it in and of a nutshell. And that's what I had to recognize in retrospect in reflection and then be aware of and then determine what's around that what's under that what's at the root of that that limited me in my way that in that way that I limited myself in that way what was about that situation about that experience what was it about that other person and then I had to realize that in opening again right because we're we can always open more and more and more in opening that is completely unaligned with having and keeping an open heart and in what really aligns with how i want to move through the world and what i want my relationships to be like platonic romantic whatever But enough about, I mean, (laughs) enough about others. Let's talk about ourselves. But it it really does start with ourselves, which is why we're always talking about ourselves, right? We're the way we practice all of this. It's beneficial to others. It's beneficial to our world when we're able to show up from a place of higher consciousness, from a place of unconditional love, from a place of open-heartedness. It takes courage to remain open-hearted. It really, really does. I believe that. Or at least, if it doesn't take courage for you, it takes conscious awareness. It takes awareness because it's easy to close. It's easy to be stone cold. It's easy to make other people's threats. It's easy to arm ourselves because of fear. It's easy to run wild because of the thorn. Because we can't even see it. Because it's unconscious. Unless we are aware of it. Unless we are courageous enough to be aware of it. And then choose, nope. 
I'm going to heal this. I'm going to pull out the thorn. I'm going to do what is needed so that I can can settle down, so that I can just be, so that I can be open-hearted and let unconditional love flow through me into the world. If we close, if we make people threats, we miss out. Our experience dims as a result. Again, from this example of of (laughs) my own specifically romantic love life, it's in every, I think, especially in this instance, when we're going from self to other, it's in every relationship. It's in our friendships. It's in our relationships with our family. It's in romantic relationships. It's in work relationships. It's in our relationships with the people we pass on the street, with the people that make us our coffee in the morning. I continually and continue to wake up to the ways I stopped believing in love or the ways, again, my perception of love was manipulated and shaped for me by what I saw on a movie screen or what was modeled for me, or whatever. And I reopen my heart every time I become aware of this. I do what I need to do to pull out that thorn, to give myself in that situation what I need, so that I can move through the world again even more open, more expanded, with more unconditional love. Because practically speaking, right, that's how we bring and shine love into this world. And our world needs love. It needs unconditional love so much everywhere in each corner. And you know what's interesting? The people I have met in my life that have closed their hearts in one way or another, all actually are very open-hearted people. They have their own thorns to heal. They have their own barriers to heal. They have those experiences to look at and disarm those threats that they once identified, as we all do. There's a quote from The Little Prince, which if you haven't read that book, 10 out of 10 recommend. They also made a movie of it on Netflix that you can watch. The quote is, it is madness to hate all roses because you got scratched with one thorn. Just let that sit with you. It is madness to hate all roses because you got scratched with one thorn. I was watching Michelle Obama's Becoming, which 10 out of 10 recommend, link is in the description. And I wanted to share among a lot of what stood out from that documentary, two quotes that pertain to this discussion 100%. The first is that if we can open up to each other and share our real stories, that's what breaks down barriers. And she goes on to say, in order to do that, you have to believe your story has value. Be vulnerable, dare to be vulnerable. If being open-hearted is about being real and being willing to be courageous and vulnerable and deep and real and really touch that depth of life and our experience here, That's this whole idea of sharing our stories, being willing and being vulnerable to share what truly matters. And that's where deep and meaningful connections happen. That's where barriers break down. That's how we understand each other. And of course, in that sense, we then have to be able to look at our own stories and see their value, see their worth, know that they are valuable of sharing. Because in that sharing... She has a conversation with a younger woman in the documentary and she explains to the girl that even though her story seems so mundane and ordinary because it's her life, that is 
her power. That is how she can reach and touch others deeply. And it's the same for all of us, each of us. And then the final thing that is important to say as we transition to our our final topic here is another quote from Michelle. We're at a crossroads of where we have to think about who we are as a nation. And I would add to that as a world, as humanity. This only becomes increasingly more apparent, right? In a world that needs more open-heartedness, that needs more vulnerability, that needs deeper connection, that we as humans crave that deeper connection, we have to be willing to show up that way. We have to be willing to open our hearts to each other. And that is how we can build those bridges and really create the better world that is possible. And it starts with you and me. Our world needs open hearts. Imagine what our world would be with unconditional love as a core global value. This is how we're going to end this podcast. Visualize that right now. We're going to do it together. We're going to put that energy out there. We're going to believe in it. We're going to embody it. It starts with you and me. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Let it go. Maybe you want to lie down. Maybe you're in a comfortable position. If you're driving or something, do this exercise. Do this when you get home. But just lie down. Close your eyes. You can put one hand on your heart and one on your stomach if you want as you take those deep breaths and ground yourself here, moving your awareness to your heart. Imagine there is a ball of unconditional love lighting up your heart right now. Choose what color it is. What, what color is it to you? Is it orange? Is it green? Is it blue? Is it white? Is it pink? Is it yellow? What color is it? See that ball of unconditional love. Now, with your breath, allow the ball to grow. See it expand as you breathe. As it expands to your shoulders, past your hands, and eventually surrounds your whole body with unconditional love. Take a few breaths. As you breathe and sit in the stillness of this unconditional loving energy. Now, see the light start to grow again. As you breathe, watch the ball of loving energy surround and consume the room you're in. See the room filled with this light of unconditional love. As you breathe, see the light grow and shrink ever so softly in sync with your breath. Now, as the ball continues to grow, watch it consume the entire 
building you're in, your home, your apartment building, wherever you are, let it consume the entire building and fill it with unconditional love and light. Now, let it grow and fill the entire neighborhood that you're in, the entire city you are in, wherever you are, let it consume your whole community. Allow that unconditional loving light and energy to grow and consume the entire country you're in, the entire continent you are on. See the continent from a bird's eye view surrounded by unconditional love and light. Feel that unconditional love and light permeating in your body, in everyone's body who is on this continent. And finally, expand that unconditional love and light to the whole world. See it from space, earth, surrounded in a bubble of unconditional love. <sighs> And as you breathe here and sit in this space, allow that love and light to continue to expand. As it expands into the universe, it dissipates and blends and blurs back into the universe. And perhaps you realize just as the bubble expands back into the universe as if it never even existed before as a separate entity so do you unconditional love is always there is always part of everything it permeates all things Open your eyes. That exercise was inspired by Tanaz from foreverconscious.com, which I will link. She has a meditation that you can purchase that walks you through a similar exercise. Thank you so much for hanging out. Keep an open heart. Yeah? I promise I will. And I hope you promise yourself that you will too. Keep opening your heart. As always, if you're not signed up yet for the Reself waitlist, be sure to do so so you're notified when our pre-launch mindset workshop preview drops, as well as, you know, getting other goodies in the old email. Be sure to follow us on Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, whatever floats your boat. Have a beautiful week. Bye, everybody.